Good morning, Christ Center. It's Wednesday, October 4th, and we are in week four of our walk through the book of John. So as always, let's uh, take a moment to invite the Holy Spirit to join us. This is Aaron Oaks, John 5, 18 through 24. This was why the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of his own accord, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, that the Son does likewise. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all that he himself is doing. And greater works than these will he show him, so that you may marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whom he will. For the Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Truly, truly, I say to you, Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. This is Tyler Clemo. When we read passages like this, it's easy to get irritated and put the villains in a box. In this case, the Jews referred to the Jewish leaders, people like the Pharisees. Clearly, They knew the scriptures, word of God, by heart, yet the real word, Logos, was standing in front of them and they did not recognize him. It's easy to shake our heads and say, oh, those Pharisees, how could they miss it? And yet, I have to ask that question of myself. Have I missed it too? Have I ever prided myself on knowing the scriptures really well? Have I ever considered the knowledge to be more important than knowing Jesus Christ himself, the real word of God? Don't get me wrong, the scriptures are wonderful, Studying scripture and memorizing it is essential, but cannot be a substitute for Jesus himself. We could put other good things in place of him. Have you ever found yourself using, say, worship music to hide from God's intimacy? I know I have, rather than to sit there silently and be with our God, Abba Father. I sometimes have relied on music to stir up my emotions. Mother Teresa said something beautiful about that kind of thing. When asked about what she asks God for in prayer, she said, nothing, I just listen. Then when asked what God says to her, she responded, nothing, he just listens to me. I love that description of intimacy she has with our God, just enjoying each other's presence. This kind of personal intimacy disrupted the religious worldview of the day, and it's still disrupting my worldview. Jesus was so personal and so intimate that he even went to the cross for us. So I want to encourage us, that intimacy with our Abba today, to find time today, to be present with him as he is present with us. And if we find our mind wandering 50 times away while sitting with him, that's 50 times we get to turn our minds back towards Jesus. Let's pray. Abba, let's sit with you and be present today, to grow in intimacy with you. Knowledge puffs up, and I ask to remain at your feet where it is better, and to learn from you. You call us your beloved, and it's extremely humbling, and opens up so many raw and vulnerable feelings. My heart sometimes yelling, David's prayer, where can I go and hide from you? Oh, how I love you, and thank you, Jesus, for always pursuing us. We love you so much. Amen.